Welcome to Procedure Flow's Art of the Flow series. This short video explains how to create subflows in Procedure Flow. Creating subflows is simple and is a great way to keep your flows clean and easy to read. A good guideline to keep flows well organized when mapping is to try to limit flows to somewhere around 16 to 24 shapes on the canvas. Procedure Flow is a bit like an onion in that it has many layers. A subflow is a layer of the procedure. If a flow looks large or complicated, the person mapping may want to consider moving some shapes into a subflow. Subflows should also be considered when there are common steps in more than one procedure. This would mean that those common steps would only need to be mapped once, and any flows that require the same steps would be linked to that subflow. Furthermore, any future updates would only be required in one location, and there is no limit to the number of flows that can be linked to a subflow. There are two ways to create subflows in Procedure Flow. In both cases, you must be in the editing canvas. The first way to create a subflow is to drag an action shape onto the canvas. In the Add Action Shape dialog, click Link at the top of the box. Click the A New Flow radio button, type in the new flow name, and then click Add. The new subflow has just been created and is linked to the new action shape you've just added. Users will know this shape is a subflow because of the underlying text. To access the new subflow, simply right-click on the shape and select Edit Flow. The second way to create a subflow is to move existing shapes into a new subflow. On the editing canvas, select the group of existing shapes you wish to move. Right-click anywhere on the selected group of shapes and select Move into New Flow. Give the new subflow a name and click Move. You'll notice all the selected shapes have been replaced by the new action shape with the name of the new subflow. When I access the new subflow, we see that all the shapes that were removed from the main flow are now here in the same configuration in which they appeared on the previous flow. We can now edit the new subflow to the desired configuration. It's as easy as that to use subflows to keep your viewers on the right path when following a procedure. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the other videos in the Art of the Flow series.